Welcome in. It's another edition of Grizz Classics Chalk Talk, and this one memorable for plenty of reasons. We have a special crew here today. Coach Houck is here, and the three captains from the 2009 team on the best comeback in school history, Mark Mariani, Sean Lebsock, Shan Schillinger, all are here. Guys, this is going to be fun. Again, another uh, chapter in Grizzly history, and you guys all had a special piece in this one. Coach Houck, I'll throw it to you first. You said right away, raw emotions. Best comeback in school history. You are right still to this day down to South Dakota State and coming back to win 61 to 48. It was a 40 to nothing spurt over the final 20 minutes. Unbelievable stuff, Coach. Well, as this plays out, it'll be phenomenal uh, to remember it, how it actually went down because it was just crazy. Uh, there's several things I remember about the game. And, you know, it's ironic, I think, that. Uh, the two biggest comebacks in school history both happened against South Dakota State. One of them with uh, the great Dave Dickinson at quarterback where they were down four touchdowns uh, late in the game and came back and won, I think, 42-41. And then this one, the difference is, is that was a Division II team at the time we were playing. And in this case, it's in the, the FCS playoffs against a great football team. So what a great game. Um, you know, it's going to be fun talking about it. The 1993 openers, the game Coach Houck was referencing, that was Dave Dickinson leading a 39 to nothing charge in the final 15 minutes of that game. This one was 40 to nothing. So a lot of similarities there. Again, I'm going to mention this a lot because it's special. We have all three captains with us, and I'm going to start with you, Mark. Where does this game rank for you? Because I know team success is number one, but when you break it down through all your story career, even that 2004 state title win against Billing Central, where does this <laughs> game rank, Mark? Well, let me just first say, man, you pulled on my heartstrings a little bit. Thinking about the captains here and me, me thinking about one of the greatest honors of my life was, you know, wearing that C with these two dudes um, <clears throat> and leading our senior class that year. Um, <clears throat> it was just unbelievable. We were wire to wire, I think, number one. And, um, you know, it was, it was truly an honor. And these guys are very special to me. But this game in particular, we should have never, ever uh, let it get out of hand like we did. <laughs> but it turned out to be, you know, one of the greatest games I've ever been a part of. When I think of my Grizz career, this obviously – is right near the top of the memories and what a special day in Washington Grizzly Stadium. I can't wait to dive into it. Mark had 12 catches, 171 yards, two touchdowns, including the game winner. And then that kick return that uh, was magical to really spark the comeback. Sean Lebstock is here making his first Grizz Classic uh, Chalk Talk. Uh, appearance. Sean, it's so great to have you, or maybe better known as here the next 45 minutes or so as Beef. But us Billings guys, we're going to stick together through this. Great to have you on. That's right, Riley. Great to be on with you. Great to be on with these guys. Um, just to reiterate what Mark said, yeah, just um, uh, incredibly meaningful being a part of this, this team, uh, sharing it with these guys and with Coach Houck. Um, pretty unforgettable stuff. Sean with nine tackles in this game on route to another over 100 tackle season. Then Shan Schillinger joining us. Better audio this time. They shift in the good audio equipment from Baker, I think, Shan, so you could be able to, to speak with us. You had 14 tackles in this game. Maybe what stands out for you when maybe you're going back down memory lane and think about this incredible comeback? Uh, obviously a special day. Um, I think it ranks up there. This is a second uh, best game I've ever been a part of, obviously behind the App State game. But um, I remember, you know, as it was special, to obviously, to take the field with these guys and Coach Houck. But um, we were the number one team in the country. And uh, I remember the Monday meeting that Coach Houck gets up and kind of preps us on who we're playing. And, you know, really in the playoffs, we're the number one team. We should have the 16th seed. And I remember Coach getting up saying, this is not the 16th team in the country. This is – a much better football team than that. And uh, so we knew from the get-go that this was going to be a uh, challenging game for us. Now, as like Mark mentioned, it got out of hand on us where it should never got that way. But uh, we knew it was going to be a tough team coming in and playing us after we had just had a really convincing win down in Bozeman a week prior. And that's a big part of this. Maybe the, the hangover effect from the rivalry game the week before. I know that you guys will get into all of that, but 
Coach, uh, let's start the tape and start telling the story of this epic comeback. <laughs> well, this, this was uh, – they moved the ball a little bit to start the game, and um, we're going to have uh, Severin Campbell coming off the top edge here. He's going to win on the tackle and make a sack. And the fact of the matter is, is that's probably the high water mark in the game till there's four minutes left in the thing. So uh, from this point on, uh, everything kind of goes to hell in a handbasket. Um, as you can see here, uh, you know, there's four and a half left in the first quarter and <clears throat> we're already down 14, nothing. So after that sack, we didn't do much. Uh, the defense is fighting. Uh, we're kind of making some plays in the kicking game to keep ourselves in it. You can see, uh, Shan going down here and making a great play. A little run through tackle. We used to work coach out. <laughs> Run through tackle, baby. We still drill it every week. But uh, I mean, we're trying to control field position. Again, we're going. We're either we're on offense. We're either turning it over or going three and out. We, I mean, we can't do anything. Again, you can see seventeen nothing. Minute and a half left in the first, and it's just it's not going our way. And as Riley mentioned, a little bit of a hangover. Donnie Lasowski makes a great play. That's that's not uh, – and we get a bat – we roll the snap back to him. We line drive the punt. <laughs> we still we still go down and cover it. And, and uh, what we're going to do is we're uh, – we're going to try to right the ship. But, you know, you're down 17 nothing at home. It's not good. I mean, I, I love I love special teams as much as anyone on this uh, on this chalk talk right now. But when those are the two best plays <laughs> that we have <laughs> for the first like thirty minutes of this game, it's like, oh my goodness, we're, we're in trouble, man. It's we're wild. Jace, Paul, Jace Palmer uh, made a good play there, and we're, we're at least going to make him punt it finally. <laughs> uh, we we make him punt it we, again. We can't uh, we can't do anything. But uh, so here we, here we go. We're going to see a bunch of this in this game. And we'll talk about the safety blitzing, Sean and Shan. I'll let you guys do it down the road here because we're going to run a bunch of it. But we're bringing the safety and both field backers here, and we're going to drop in. It's, it's uh, an odd front defense. And Shan comes and do a great job, and we tip it into Big Sev's hands. And that's not going to be his only highlight play of the day. Big day from Sev, man. Sev uh, played big down the stretch for us. So we get down and we that uh, that interception. Okay, we're finally going to get going here, and Chase gets it in the end zone. And seven minutes left in the first half, and we're on the board finally. Did panic set in at all at any certain point? Now looking back in hindsight, w w when did it kind of go? Hold, man. We we need to turn the tide here. Was there a certain point that you guys remember? Well, we kept, you know, the, the thing, and you guys can answer that question. We continue to play our tails off. We're going to cause another turnover here. Um, you know, Andrew Sell had just thrown a pick right before this. I mean, it's just not going well. The wheels are off, but everybody's holding the rope, and we're trying to, we're trying to hang on. I just Sean, on the, deep, on the defensive yeah, side, what did you guys – feel at least maybe on your heels to start, but, but to turn the tie, what were you really seeing on that side? You know, on defense, I remember thinking, man, this, this is a big physical team. Um, we we kind of knew what we were up against there, but um, just kind of the game plan, uh, trust our techniques, trust our, trust our assignments and, and try and do those the best we can. We, at this point, we know we're not out of it. We'd started slow a few times throughout the season already and, and come back, and we would wear teams out as the game went on. And we we're a second-half team for sure. But um, not worried at this point. We would get more worried. as <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're gonna, it's going to be fun hearing some of the, the commentary on it. So we get that turnover, and we decide to take a shot. This is the first uh, first play, and, and – Selly goes over the top to uh, to Ty Palmer for six, and and we're back in it now. It's it's uh, it's going to be 17-14. 
Palmer. Now it feels by like, Ty Ty. Yeah, that was a dime too by Selly and a heck of a play by the Beast. <laughs> so you can see the play action. Good protection. Thomas Brooks Fletcher with the fake, then the protection. And, you know, Ty makes a nice catch in the back of the end zone and secures it. And so, hey, we're, we're in good shape. All right. We're the number one team in the country. We're back in business. It's a three point game. The ship's right it. And then you look what happened. We go, we go a couple minutes forward, and uh, here we go. End of the, uh, end of the uh, second quarter, minute 26 left, and we're down 31-14. <laughs> I mean, I think like what Beef said, we weren't – you know, we, we had some so slow starts, and we were accustomed to coming from behind, but this thing just kept unraveling over and over. Whenever we felt like we got the gap closed, they just came out and scored three touchdowns on us. And, and you can see, and that's a great hit by Keith Thompson. Everybody's playing hard. Keith uh, eventually is going to become known for hits like that on the, some of those plays. But, uh, you know, so that's that. So we go, we go into halftime. We're, we're down 31-14. And uh, uh, I thought I'd put this on because I thought it was interesting. Look at some of your team going into your block. Don't tear it up. And what do you got to do differently in the second half? What do you, what can you do to make this come back? Not turn it up. Uh, says, hey, uh, don't turn he says don't turn it over so we went into uh we went in the locker room and i mean i i have said i think this was the best defense in the country uh in fcs football in this season we'd given up 31 in the first half and it looked like we were lucky uh not to give up 51 or 61 in the first half so shan do you do you remember what was said at halftime I do very, very uh, clearly. I remember coach saying, does anyone not think we're going to win this game? And uh, obviously no one says anything. And he says, if you don't think we're going to win this game, take your pads off and hit the shower. I don't want you out there. um, So that was the message at halftime. And that was the message that coach Halk instilled to us. He was always a confident leader. And whenever we took the field, regardless of what the situation was, um, we knew our head coach thought we were going to win. And and I think that bled down to us, but that, that's, that was something that will stick to me forever is, you know, things were ugly. We're down 31-14, and the head guy tells us, if you don't think we're going to win, stay in the locker room. And needless to say, everyone decided to take the field, and thankfully we did. No question. The other team might have had, you know, they were pushing us around a little bit. Um, might have had some, some dudes that we weren't handling, and, and uh, no one had more confidence in us than Coach Alex. So I always appreciated that. So we come out, uh, we come out and give up a field goal. It's now 34-14, immediately give up a field goal. And then we go three and out, back in our own end. There's 11-20 left in the third. And we get a, we're going to see this. Uh, we promptly uh, get a punt block for a touchdown. <laughs> so uh, you're going to see this. Uh, they come off the, uh, the left tackle. And uh, we can just listen to the commentary here. This one's over. It's now going to 41-14. This is, this is what I'm talking about. You think you go into halftime, kill the momentum, start over, make adjustments. You come out, and you're going to take control of the second half. And we give up 10 points in the first three <laughs> minutes. And we're just – that did not go as, we were, as it was planned, man. It just kept getting worse. It kept getting worse. So, now that – I mean, now, now you're down 41-14, you're down right? And there's six – there's six 49-50 left in the, in the third quarter. We, you know, we, we march down the field. And we go, we go uh, get it in the end zone. But the disaster is going to continue. You know, we keep thinking we're fighting our way back in it. But the disaster is going to continue. Coach, I know you're a guy that is calculated when it comes to time. In your head, when you were starting to count possessions after they score here to go 48-21, were you starting to do the math and thinking, okay, we're running out of time here? Well, at this point, so after, after this one, the discussion on our headphones is, okay, we're in, we're in uh, on offense, we're in two-minute mode, and – we on defense, we're in we're in gamble mode at this point. So, like I said, we we score. We now cut it all the way down to three touchdowns, but they march right down the field on us and hit us with a big play on a post route. And 
So it's interesting to listen to that. again. I, I enjoy listening to the commentary here. <laughs> they we're, were getting after we're talking us. about us in past tense at this point, probably rightly so. <laughs> I'm going to have a word with Phil about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, their people are happy. I think this was the point where I was coming to the realization, is, is this really going to happen? I had an incident with their fullback who had been tagging all day and, uh, he gets up and pats me on the head in, in like a respectful manner. He's like, hey, man, good season. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good. He reached, he reached down, tapped you on the head, Beep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's a good story, Beep. I've never heard you tell that. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, was just, I had nothing to say, but uh, I should have just said, hey, we got number 80. We got number 80. He's about to take over this game. The, le so, the legend of Mark Mariani uh, continues on right, right at this moment, guys. Yeah, so this is kind of – now Now it's uh, – as you mentioned, Riley, it's serious. I'm talking about, hey, we got to – we got to – we're in gamble mode on defense. We're two-minute offense. And, uh, Mark, I don't know if you remember. So let's let's listen to this. I'll cue it up a little bit. Just how much has gone wrong and how much has gone bad for this Montana football team today. Obviously, much of it, but how good is the South Dakota State team? Wow. Thanks, good. Phil. to play here in the third. Big upset brewing here. It's insane. Montana leads the series between these two schools six to nothing. So we're we're down. Uh, a bunch end of the third they're kicking off to us mark i, I want to ask you now I, I remember distinctly what the call was here and all that do you remember what this was well what i remember about it is i didn't return kicks this season this might have been my first maybe my second one of the year and you're you were just what you're saying it, it's 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 time to pull out everything and um so i can't remember i'm sure i'm sure you know, the huddle was, you know, get your butt in there. It's go time. But I remember we were taking it back to the field. I can't remember what the call was, but right, it, was, it was back to the field, which is my favorite, you know, thing to do. I just feel like it opens up a whole, you know, a bunch of different options for, as a returner. If you can make it to, if you can make it to the, you know, that side of the field without the backside tracking you down. And um, that's exactly what happened, man. And I remember getting thrown out there and I was probably begging you all season to return kicks, but I was like, Let's no, it's go time, man. <laughs> well, it was uh, truly uh, go time. As I said, we're in gamble mode, so we actually let you return a kick. But, uh, uh, you know, so here's here's how this – your recollection of this is exactly right. So we we basically boarded – we drew this in the dirt on the sideline. We boarded this. We, we went to return right stay, which is something we never practiced one time uh, during the season. And we lined up like we were going return left, and then we ran it back to the backside with our wedge return, which is uh, not one time on the season in practice or in a game. Every we had a bunch of smart dudes, and we'll show you what happens. That's awesome. I didn't know and, that. And right stay, you know, it's one thing if you they kick it to the right, and then you're going to to the boundary. But when he kicks it to the left over here, and we get the whole width of the field to play with, it was off to the races. This is when I knew we could come back and win. Well, yeah. the, the the thing about this is, is you know, I have I have, you know, everybody says they didn't leave this game. Our stand, the stands were clearing out, man. <laughs> I had I've had buddies of mine tell me they were listening to it on the radio, driving home, uh, irritated to say the least, sad, and they heard this happen and they wheeled around and came back and about five minutes later the state the people are coming in like it's the start of the game again. Yeah. This is this is a moment of you know the play itself obviously I'll never forget but right here in the end zone I just remember the doubt you know like we said the doubt crew me but right here I'm not even celebrating I'm just so angry and pissed off I'm like you know it's a big play but we still got to make four more of these before we're back <laughs> into this thing and yeah. so I, I remember just you know thinking on the sideline this can't be the end of our senior year man this cannot be <laughs> and they're gonna have to drag us off this field when that clock expires man so we got time left we needed a huge play 
and uh, Mark would have been uh, would have been a lousy way to go out. So uh, from that point on, uh, you know, we're we're there's 204 left in the third. We're we're really not back in it. But from that point on, we had seven straight three and outs by our defense to wrap up the game. <laughs> and, you know, this is just what Mark was talking about just a second ago about everybody uh, knuckling down and saying we're not – whoop, excuse me – we're not going to lose this game. Uh, we gave them a little bit different formation. We got two backs in the backfield, all right? It's 21 personnel, but we give – this is a tight end up here. We give them a three-wide look and a split-back look, and we're in a little bit layered route. Mark makes a nice catch, but you can see – He's not going down. You got Dan Bowden, Chase Reynolds here, working their tails off blocking. And, you know, it's it, it's over, but it's not over. Big time play, Marcus. <laughs> like that elbow at the end, too. <laughs> He's a beast. We, I heard you guys talking on the last one. We don't run out of bounds, man. We don't <laughs> run out of bounds in this program. So, but you can see we're we're absolutely getting throttled. It's forty eight. The start of the fourth quarter, forty eight twenty seven. We have sixteen yards rushing, and uh, things aren't good. But we we give uh, Golden Boy here a little double move. It's uh, <laughs> you know we're a big double post team as you saw at the play action uh, touchdown in the first half. But Mark's going to give him a little post corner move here, and this one I had a good feeling when this one was called. We had been setting this up all day, too. You're right, Coach. I mean, it's it's crazy to think of how far down we were, guys. I mean, we were so far down, and not that I didn't think we were going to win, but it's that little man in the back of your head starts creeping up on you when you're down four scores. <laughs> There's no exactly. doubt. So – Shan, I'll let you and Sean talk a little bit about this, but we've got backer, backer, safety. We're going to blitz our strong side back and our safety into the big F the field. We used to call that field smoke, if you guys remember. Absolutely, and, uh, Coach. I think we ran it about eight straight times, Shan. <laughs> You're right, Coach. We, as you mentioned, we kind of got into a little bit of a gamble mode and got aggressive, and it was a good call. Uh, field smoke is what it was, and I remember running it about ten times, and – so uh, as you, you said, seven straight three and outs, that's impressive to do. So, you know, tackle for a loss by you. There's, there's beef right there. Um, you know, they, they were playing the odds from about, oh, heck, you know, Riley asked about the time from about 11 minutes left in the third. They were going to have a heavy dose of run. Their quarterback wasn't a drop back, just beat you, throwing it guy all the time. And they were going to, they were going to run it. And we knew it. They knew it. And we started going, and as I said, a bunch of safety blitz, seven straight, three and outs, and uh, we had a chance to get after him. So, good job by you, Shan, there. It's a good call. They're still going to let it run. So, 14 the tackles. Running. Is that what he ended up with? 14. So, we're getting – they've got some penalties and all that, but, again, we're it's the same dang blitz. We got you blitzing. You're, you and uh, Sean's other roommate here, Brandon Fisher, comes off. You spill it to him. Fish. Keep your feet, Shan. Oh, uh, now fish. everybody's fired up. Now, that was something, though, that always jumped out to me. Great run support from our safeties. Eric Stoll as well. But Sean, throughout the entire year, um, getting to the second level meant – Maybe getting two, three yards uh, so the behind those. So, start of the fourth, you know, it's just not very good. We are three and out, and we're back in it. So, again, a little over seven minutes left. We get down here, and you know that it's not like they're giving up. Watch them knock us. Watch them knock us back. But great run by Chase getting it in, and it's a, it's now one touchdown game. Big run by Chase there. You talk about guys competing. Phil's believing us in us now, Mark. <laughs> yeah, different <laughs> different tone. <laughs> oh man, there's some people still so left. Chase, Chase scores. I'm, uh, you know, now knowing what happened, I'm looking. We had three teams in the playoffs that year, Eastern and Weaver, 
Um, Stephen F. Austin's going to end up beating up on on uh, Eastern. That's who we're going to get next. It's just interesting to see some of the scores coming up on the on the bottom of the screen here. William and Mary ends up hanging it on Weaver. We had just beaten on Halloween. We beat Weaver State thirty-one nothing or thirty-one three a couple weeks before this game. So yeah. that's how it's shaping up. We're going to be the lone Big Sky team left. Awesome. This was a heck of a season, man. This was a heck of a season. So again, here we go. Now they don't they don't want to put it in the quarterback's hands to throw it down the field. They still think they're they're superior. They're still up. There's six minutes left, and this ends. This is a double screen play, so that we got a jailbreak screen here and a swing screen down here away from the back, which is a, a little unusual. And we sev peels on it, and they got nowhere to throw it. And we end up with the sack. Waldo. Waldo, man, great play. Buzz. Despite everything that went against you guys defensively, there was one stat. You know, I'm going to pull out a stat on you guys. They were one for 12 on third down. So at least this, despite all of that, you guys had that going for you. That I had to get some momentum going, at least on the defensive side, to carry it back over. Well, absolutely. Go ahead, guys. Go ahead and talk a little bit about that. Go ahead, Sean. Yeah, no, just rolling up the stops. I mean, they, they were – chunking on us uh, a little bit in the first half, but um, that second half, yeah, you get stop after stop. You, you're getting your legs underneath you. You're out on the field, so you're fresh all the time, and and uh, you've got your offense starting to starting to roll it up on them as well, and uh, confidence is a huge thing. Uh, we, we fed off each other and, and uh, yeah, yeah, panned out. Yeah. Let's not forget, too, I mean, the offense was playing like poop, in the first half and, and given this defense a bunch of short fields. I mean, we turned the ball over a ton. We got punts blocked. And so they were, they were, they were defending the short field, you know, for three quarters too. Um, so it wasn't like they were just getting points put up on them. It was, it, it was, a, it was a group effort out there to, to get those points hung on us. Yeah. With, with 11 minutes left in the third and we're down 41, 14, this one's over. And then uh, after the block punt, then we, we go down and score, and they go right down and score again. I mean, we're not even thinking about stopping them. And it's 48-21 at that point was six minutes or 540 left in the third. That's when the kickoff return happened. But, you know, it, this is a, a true example of persistence and, and will to win. And they're going to talk about that at the end of the game a little bit. Anything, Shan? No, I just – I thought, like you said, we had – we thought if we could get him to drop back and throw, we were going to be in good shape. Um, but, unfortunately, in the first half, we weren't able to get him to do it much. And then, um, you know, like I said, your message at halftime, I think, was clear. You know, if you don't think we're going to win, don't come out. And that's kind of – Mark had mentioned – or Sean had mentioned, we had started slow at times, but we'd always uh, – we were a resilient group. And, um, you know, you don't win 51 games or how many we won and four years without uh, being able to overcome things. And that's a credit to our staff and our guys for buying in. Well, we're still down seven with five, 14 left. And I, I would say this is the wildest game I have ever been a part of. <laughs> I mean, I can't <laughs> tell you. And then, you know, uh, we'll look at this. Selly, he's like two different dudes. <laughs> God, Mark, you're – routing them mark had a big day but andrew i mean andrew in the first half and maybe through the middle of the third quarter looked like the worst quarterback in school history <laughs> in the last whatever 19 minutes he was the best quarterback in the country i mean yes. it, was, it was unbelievable yeah we started punishing them here we just started pouring it on i mean we are we are the number one ranked team and we're for most of the season. I mean, we, we should have never let it get out of hand like it did, but this is what it's supposed to look like. Well, Stadium's nobody's going crazy. Nobody can believe it. Uh, check out this guy. Re read his lips. He goes, he goes, Oh my God. 
<laughs> hey, Sean, how do you think that uh, that fullback was that was patting you on the head, at least at this point? What do you think he thought at this point? I didn't hear much from him the rest of the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's funny. Listen to the announcers here. So hard to describe what's going on right now inside the stadium. I'm having trouble describing it 12 years later. <laughs> so we three and out him again, and we get the ball back. If I remember right, it's probably about our own 40 or 35 yard line. So <clears throat> they try to run. They they tr they need a drive to go get points. We three and out him again. They punt it. So we're now tied. We're not just going fast anymore. So we grind it down. We actually got to the 35 yard line where we're near in field goal range. And we actually got into four minute kill the cat offense where we're bleeding it down. So we're going to try to uh, kick a field goal here to win it with no time left on the clock. So they get us into, uh, I think this was a second down play, if I remember right. And they're playing us to run it. We run a little high bootleg with Dan out here and Mark there. Uh, they're trying to, Man you up. Obviously, the play action makes this backer suck in, and Mark's gonna double move and go the outs. So we got a little, we got a little flood route off the bootleg action, and I remember Coach Fan on this route was like, "Hey, if we if we get this, you got time. You're you're the guy." And I when he came and played me to the outside leverage, I was like, "Man, he's sitting out there." And I just remembered Coach Fan saying, "Listen, you got time on this one. Selly boys rolling to Selly. you." Yep, Sally Boy's rolling to you, and then right at the top of the route, I was like, oh, my God, I'm going the other way. What are you doing? <laughs> well, that ain't exactly covered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, what I want to say is, where the hell were you guys the first half? Yeah, hey, I know, Coach. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> oh, my God. Crazy. <laughs> Slap hands. Uh, <laughs> oh, took over, God. Marcus. Uh, that is it, great. It's, 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 yeah, let's watch how this plays out first. Yeah, we'll get a chance to talk about how this all transpired. So, uh, you know, we're up by seven. Think we're going to cover? No. Nah. We've been safety blitzing all day. So, this is now bringing the field backer and the field safety off the edge. That was called field storm. We're running zone, zone pressure with it. And what a great play by you. This is Shan right here. Yeah. It's a this big time right here. He's going to come knock it down, and big fella is going to be on the on the on the spot. On it. <clears throat> he is so athletic, man. He, it just blows me away yeah, still to this day. Sev, man, what a dude. Good guy, man. Another defensive end who came in as a wideout or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That was, Forty uh, to nothing in twenty minutes. That's what this capped off. 40 to nothing run here in a 20 minute span. It's just crazy. Yeah, it's it is. It's hard to believe. Is that it? There we go, coach. <laughs> <laughs> There's Austin Mullins. There's Mark. Uh, so nine seconds left. This one's uh, in the books. So what do we do? Nine seconds left. They moved it down. <laughs> what we did is we nudge kicked it. So they couldn't get a return. So they got the ball at midfield here. So they made a, a play or two to get it down in here. And so it's uh ball on the 20, first and uh first and 10 on the 20. We don't we decide not to cover them. We safety blitz them again for the 50th time in the second <laughs> half. <laughs> and he throws it to true. There we go. I just, I DJ. think it's, I think it's, we'll talk about this. I think it's really interesting. We're going victory here. I think it's really interesting to listen to the commentary. Yeah, he had a tough job to that day trying to describe what the heck was going on in that stadium. He did. And these, these people are like, they're like, what just happened? <laughs> that happened so fast. Yeah. <laughs> this game was over. There you are. Long way back, Brookings. Long way back. It's victory, Mark. You're the tackler now. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. There, there we are. All right. You're in what charge. Are we doing? If, we if, they, if we fumble the snap, you're in charge of tackling the guy. To keep <laughs> we always, we always buried the sword. I don't know if you guys remember that. Me and oh, Ty, yeah. just a bunch of clowns. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, we're and Mike the Baird. Now they're into the now they're into the backflip. Oh nice! <laughs> I couldn't pull that off. No, I'm, I'm getting old and soft. Is what it is. I like no, it. Listen to what they have to say here. It's awesome. Panic. There was no upset. Everybody freaking out. It was just a matter of hey, let's just get back to business, play hard at the very end. But what a job by his coaching staff. What the hell that was. <laughs> guys that continue to come on. They proved exactly why they're. Oh, there's the. There he was. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen that in years. They never show that on the highlights. Mm. That is so good. <laughs> Bury it. Oh. Uh, bury the sword. That's right. <laughs> Finish him. Braveheart him. All right, so th this is like an infomercial right now when these guys start talking. This is like an infomercial for our football program. So just listen to it. It's awesome. Job coaching staff just to give those guys to continue to come out and fight. They exactly why they're on. The mountain of business. This this was a statement game about this program, in my opinion. The final cannon has sounded. Your final score from Missoula, 61-48. The Grizzlies advance to the quarterfinals. <laughs> what was that handshake like, Coach? Well, you know that was interesting because I. I mean, he's he's a great dude and a great football coach. I mean, he's still there. He's been there forever. And uh, Coach Stig, I just like – he was in shock. And I was like, man, that's – we're so lucky. I just – you know, I, I told him, I said, we are so lucky to get that win. And then I'm looking up the scoreboard going, man, we scored 41 straight points or something <laughs> in the last quarter and a half on you guys. So I don't, I don't know, man. Um, they have a great program. He's a great football coach. And it's always more satisfying to beat people you know that they know what they're doing. That guy after the game at the press conference. They were still in the, shock. We got out of the elevator, and I think whoever was with me, probably you guys, and uh, he's like, Where, where's that Mariani? I'm like, <laughs> right here. And he looked at me as a hundred scrawny little 175, whatever I was, 180-pounder, and he's like, wait. That you that you're you're that guy. I'm like, yeah, and I'll never forget the way he looked at me, like just so I don't know, just depressed or something. Like, wow, <laughs> this guy's a scrawny little pencil neck, man. <laughs> How do we let that happen? <laughs> Watch out for those pencil necks from uh, northern and eastern Montana. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> That's right. Don't don't tap the little midget linebacker on the head either. It <laughs> aggravates him. Exactly. Uh -huh. Hey, like like we said last week, beef. We it was great. We had fish. We had a linebacker shorter than you. <laughs> yeah, no, I did catch up on uh, some of those past uh, episodes of Chalk Talk. I, I, you know, you gave me some compliments after. Uh, <laughs> Tell them, beef. <laughs> my stature was ripped on, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's 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 easier to do it when you aren't looking at us on the camera, man. It's <laughs> No, we we take it easy on you, Sean. I think it's it's worth for this new generation of Grizz fans. Here, you need to remind everyone how the Beef nickname came to uh, came to just tradition and lore here with Grizzly football. Remind us the story. Yeah, Beef. Um, it was my nickname when I was a little kid because I was wondering what was for dinner at the breakfast table. <laughs> uh, you know, overweight little kid. Yeah, I, I grew into it, I suppose, a little bit, but. Um, yeah, thick stature. Uh, my brother Matt was already calling me it. So, um, and Matt was, of course, uh, he preceded me by a couple of years up uh, at Montana. He was a safety. So, um, so he was calling me the, all the other guys. There were trainers on our staff. They didn't know. <laughs> they thought. There, there's some detriment to having siblings on the team. Well, yeah, no uh, doubt. And, he didn't and, like it at first, though. He didn't like it. I tried to fight it, and as a freshman, that didn't go over well with the older guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. That's just when you get your older brother egging them all on, it's not going to go well. Yeah. There was uh, – talk a little bit, Sean, while we got you. Uh, you know, obviously there were four of you on our team eventually. Uh, it, was, it was a real pleasure to get to coach uh, four Lebsock brothers. The only one I missed was, uh, was Chris. But – what? At this juncture, there was three of you guys on the team. 
Yeah, yeah. At one point um, in 2007 uh, or 06, uh, there was Nick, who was a year younger. Uh, he was a lineman and Matt was a safety. Um, it was an absolute privilege and, and joy to, to play with my brothers. I've you know, done it my entire life and to do it uh, through college was, was great. It was, uh, it was a really fun experience. Uh, very blessed to, to have those times. Well, we appreciated uh, Ron and Barty sending us their boys and trusting us with you. And despite hey. our best efforts, you guys all turned out pretty good. <laughs> yeah, including my, my other brothers here. Yeah, we uh, – no, I think we're all extremely thankful for our time in Montana. Just in this game is uh, – it seems to be a kind of a microcosm of all of that. I mean, we're our, – our coaching staff has the utmost confidence in us. And we eventually have that, we have that confidence in ourselves because of that, because of, well, well how did we get there? Hard work, discipline, um, uh, looking out for each other, taking care of each other. And uh, so very thankful for those things. Well, me too. Mark, any, ta any other takeaways from this one? Yeah, I think, I think, I think Beef hits, hits it on the head there. This, this game is kind of a microcosm and, and kind of a, really good description of what this team was. I mean, we go to the national championship as juniors and we have a little bit of a target on our back and loved it. But, you know, when you look at, when you look at our kind of our roster and, and putting the team back together and it's just a bunch of hardworking, gritty dudes and beef, beef, this game. And then beef in himself is a, you know, is a, is a description of what we had going on. He's whatever undersized and whatever, whatever you want to call it. Try meeting that dude in the hole, you know, 25 times during a game. He, part of the reason he got that nickname is because he will put a thumping on you and he's a thick dude and he makes you hurt and you feel it the <laughs> next day. But um, I think I think I just – I never want to understate this. We just loved each other so much, man. And I had so much faith in our defense. They're just a bunch of badasses. And, you know, it's easy to look back now and say, oh, we would have – you know, I knew we were going to win this game. But at the same time, you know, I always had faith, whether they scored five times in a row or what, I always had faith our defense was going to hit them in the mouth. Um, you know, we took pride on offense in, you know, making sure that we were held accountable. And it was just an unbelievable senior class. And I just love these guys, man. This is kind of uh, – we were not going to go out like this. Let's just put it that way. We weren't going to let that happen. Shan? Yes, no doubt. Well said, Marcus. Um, I, I remember going home, uh, getting in the car with my roommate, Brandon Fisher, being, what the hell just happened? Um, I don't think we'll ever experience anything like that again. Uh, I, like I said, I, the Appalachian State game we talked a couple weeks ago, um, I think this was the second greatest game in the stadium. And to be a part of it was awesome with you guys, you know, obviously Coach and Mark and Sean. And, and uh, you know, those are memories I'll never forget. Uh, what a what a crew and I mentioned earlier you know I think we won 51 games in four years that's impressive and you 54 <coughs> was it 54? 54 I'm sorry man um, they're short. hard to get why would you short change <laughs> three games winning's hard Chan <laughs> losing <laughs> easy man you're exactly right you're exactly <laughs> right I apologize um, so yeah that's a what a crew what a crew and uh you know, we still talk about this stuff all the time, but to go back and watch this is really special. Coach, the, these guys have said throughout the entire video and really the last couple of weeks about the leadership of you and your staff. How about the leadership of these three? I mean, it is special that we have all three of the captains for the greatest comeback in school history. What did their leadership uh, mean to you during the time and now looking back in hindsight? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. These guys were were – a great group of captains. Obviously, they went they they won 15 straight games their senior year. Uh, just a, a tremendous job by them keeping it all together. And I think this game really uh, allows you to personify uh, what those guys did and that group of seniors did in our locker room and what this team was all about. And you know they, you know they mentioned how much they cared about each other and and loved each other and wanted to play for each other and for the state of Montana. And, you know, they didn't want this game to be the last game. They certainly didn't want to go out and lay an egg. But, you know, um, 
uh, winning, as Mark just mentioned, we always, we talk about it weekly. Winning's hard. Losing's easy. All you have to do is give in. And, you know, in our game, they keep scoring, they quantify it. And uh, oftentimes um, success and failure are uh, deemed so by the scoreboard, but that's not really our opinion on success and failure. And what it is, is you fight to the finish and success and failure are not defined by the, by winning and losing. I mean, this was not our day. I mean, sometimes it's not your day and the other team wins. And these guys didn't win in their time here. They didn't lose much. Uh, I think maybe five games in their four year span. I think they were 54 and five or something uh, while they were, while they were in uniform, but the only way you can lose in football is by giving up or giving in. That's the only way you fail. Uh, the scoreboard is what it is, but if you fight to the finish, sometimes the other team wins. And uh, this game epitomizes that spirit in this program. And as we heard at the end of this, and we've listened to these guys talk, uh, we heard the commentators, we've heard the captains talk about this, the, the never say die, we're going to fight to the finish and find a way to get it done uh, for the University of Montana. Um, you know, that permeates this program. And the good news is, is that spirit is back in our football program. And we're excited to put it on display this September. Well said, well said coach. coach. And a well, good way to end it. Go ahead. I was just going to say, well said, coach. I totally agree. Guys, this one, uh, this one will go down in, in the books for a long time. I think people enjoy going back and watching this chalk talk and the best comeback ever in school history. The three captains with Coach Houck, Mark Mariani, Sean Lebsock, Shan Schillinger. Thanks so much for hopping on, guys. This was uh, fun to relive this comeback against South Dakota State. Thanks a lot, Riley. Thank you, guys. Up with Montana Thanks, guys. boys. Way to go, Thanks, guys. guys. Go Grizz. Beef, love you, man. Love you too, Coach. Until the next time here on Grizz Classics Chalk Talk, we'll talk to you then.